Welcome to iLecture Online, and here are some more examples of how to take derivatives. What we're going to do now is show you examples where the cohesion rule, the prior rule, and or the chain rule are combined. Here in this case, we're going to look at something where you use the product rule and the chain rule together. And eventually, we'll do all three at the same time. All right, so let's try to figure out how to find the derivative, so y prime is equal to. So first, what you do is you realize that it's really the product of two functions that are raised to some exponent. So first you apply the product rule and then you also apply the chain rule. So here, again, using the product rule, it will be the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So we take the first, which is x cubed plus 5x squared times the derivative oh, to the third power, can't forget to the third power, times the derivative of this. Now, when we take the derivative of this, we need to use the chain rule. So that would be times 2 times x squared minus 3x to the first power, subtract one from the exponent, times the derivative of what's inside, which is 2x minus 3. So again, that is the first times the derivative of the second, and we have to take the chain rule to do the derivative of the second. So it's 2 times this to the first power times the derivative of what's inside, plus now the second part. It's the second function, x squared minus 3x to the second power, times the derivative of the first, and then we have to use the chain rule again. So we use 3 times what's inside to the second power, 3 times x cubed plus 5x squared to the 3 minus 1, which is second power, times the derivative of what's inside, which is uh, x Oh, not, It'll, we have to take derivative of what's inside, so <clears throat> we use 3x squared plus 5 times 2, which is 10x to the 2 minus 1, which is the first power, like so. So that is the derivative of that product. Now, we don't want to leave it like that, we want to try to simplify this, so if we can, by factoring out anything that's common. So here we have one term plus a second term. <clears throat> so, what's common here? Well, we have an x cubed plus 5x squared to the third power, and we have an x cubed plus 5x squared to the second power, which means we can factor out a, an x cubed, getting a little ahead of myself, so we have an x cubed plus 5x squared to the second power, because I can take this to the second power out of here, and this to the second part out of here. We have a 2 here, we have a 3 there, so that's not common, we can't factor that out. We have an x squared minus 3x to the first power and an x squared minus 3x to the second power, which means we can also pull out or factor out an x squared minus 3x to the first power. And then we have a 2x minus 3 and a 3x squared plus 10x, that's not common in both terms, so they stay there. So what do we have left? On the left here, we pulled out an x cubed plus 5x squared to the first power, so we have one of those left, uh, second power, so we have a x squared or x cubed plus 5x squared to the first power left. We still have a 2. This has been factored out, so that's gone, and then we still have a 2x minus 3. Plus, so what do we pull out of, of the second term? An x squared minus 3x squared, that's... Uh, right here, we pulled one of those out, so we have one left. x squared minus 3x to the first power is left. Times 3, that's still there. We have an x cubed plus 5x squared squared. We pull that out, so that's gone. And then we have this left, which is 3x squared plus 10x. Okay, like so. And then... We could potentially multiply everything out, collect common terms and so forth. We're not going to do that. We're just going to leave it like that in a factored form. And that is the derivative of this particular problem. All right, so you can see that gets a little bit tricky. You have to be very careful not to make any mistakes. Uh, again, to recap, you have the product of two functions, but each function is raised to an exponent, which means you have to use a combination of the product rule and the chain rule. We use the product rule where we take the first, times the derivative of the second. So you look at this all in isolation, and when you take the derivative, you realize you have to take the exponent put in front, times what's left to the first power, 2 minus 1, and multiply times the 
derivative of what's inside, and then plus the second, you take the second function here, times the derivative of the first function. And the first function, you realize you have to use a chain rule, so you put the three in front, times the quantity to the three minus one, times the derivative of what's inside, which is this. And then to simplify things, you then go ahead and factor out what's common in each term. So you recognize that this is common and this is common among the first and the second term. It's in reverse here. So you pull out the one that's common and then you write down what you have left. And that's how you do these problems. A um, little bit tricky. Be very careful, very slow. But realize that if you follow the rules verbatim, you shouldn't have a big problem getting the answer. All right, let me show you some additional examples of this.